Welcome viewers to this episode on hydrogen part 3 which is based on unit 9 of class 11th chemistry book part 2. In this episode we will discuss a very important compound of dihydrogen that is water. Here we will explain the physical and chemical properties of water as well as hard water and soft water. We will also describe the temporary and permanent hardness of water and the methods of removing it. You are all familiar with water and its importance. It is required by all life forms for survival. The human body has about 65 percent water and some plants have about 95 percent water. Water is a great solvent. The distribution of water on earth's surface is not uniform as is evident from the data given in the table. In different sources the percentage of total words water is like this, in oceans it is 97.33 percent, in saline lakes or in inland seas it is 0.008 percent, polar ice and glaciers have about 2 percent that is 2.0 percent of the total water and ground water is 0.62 percent and lakes if you see has very very less percentage though they seem to be having a large quantity of water it is only 0.009 percent and soil moisture has again very less percentage 0.005 percent and atmospheric water vapor has 0.001 percent water and rivers if you talk about it is 0.0001 percent only. Let us now understand the physical properties of water which make its role unique in the universe. It shows hydrogen bonding between the molecules and this is responsible for its high freezing point and high boiling point. The other physical properties having higher values in comparison with the other liquids are high heat of vaporization and heat of fusion, high specific heat, high thermal conductivity, high dipole moment, high dielectric constant and high heat of vaporization and heat capacity are responsible for moderation of climate and body temperature of living beings. It is an excellent solvent for transportation of ions and molecules in plant and animal metabolism. Hydrogen bonding is also responsible for solubility of covalent molecules for example, alcohols and carbohydrates. Let us now focus on the interesting aspects of structure of water. The molecule of water has a bent shape and the bond angle is 104.5 degree and the OH bond length is 95.7 picometer as is being shown in the structure here. You can see its polar nature as is given in the structure. There is a partial positive charge on the hydrogen atoms and there is a partial negative charge on the oxygen. The orbital structure of water shows two lone pairs of electrons on oxygen as is shown in the structure here. There is hydrogen bonding present between the molecules of water in the liquid state. The crystalline form of water is ice and the density of ice is less than that of water. In winters, ice on the surface of lakes and water bodies provides thermal insulation for aquatic life and this is of great ecological importance. At atmospheric pressure, ice crystallizes in hexagonal form, but at very low temperature it condenses in cubic form. The three dimensional nature of the structure of ice is very ordered and is shown in this diagram. Here you can see that each oxygen is tetrahedrally surrounded by four other oxygen atoms. The hydrogen bonding gives open type structure with 
wide holes in which other molecules can be held interstitially. We will now study the important chemical properties of water. These are its amphoteric nature, redox reactions, hydrolysis and hydrate formation. So, coming first to the amphoteric nature of water, water can act both as an acid as well as a base. As Bronsted acid and base, it can give a proton and take a proton as is shown in the equation given below. Water can give a proton to a base like ammonia as shown in the equation below and water can also protonate hydrogen sulphide and you will be getting a hydronium ion in that case plus the anion in the aqueous medium. The autoprotolysis or self ionization of water shows the following equilibrium in which one water molecule gives a proton which is taken up by another molecule. Here you can see one water molecule is giving a proton to the other molecule that means it is behaving as an acid and the molecule which is getting a proton is behaving as a base and after giving the proton what is left is OH minus ion which is basic and this is called the base or the conjugate base corresponding to the first molecule of water which is shown as an acid 1 here and the corresponding base which is the conjugate base pair forming with this acid 1 is denoted here by base 1. Similarly, there is a conjugate acid base pair where the second molecule of water is acting as a base receiving a proton from the first molecule of water which was acting as acid 1 and this second molecule of water is receiving a proton and getting converted to the H3O plus hydronium ion which is acidic and is being labeled as acid 2 which is now forming another conjugate acid base pair. Now, let us talk about its redox reactions. Water can easily be reduced to dihydrogen with highly electropositive metals. Water can reduce sodium as has been shown in this equation to give sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is produced in this reaction. So, this reaction can act as a source of dihydrogen. Water can be oxidized to dioxygen as has been shown in the equations of the reactions shown below. Coming to the hydrolysis reactions, water has a strong hydrating tendency due to its high dielectric constant. It dissolves many ionic compounds, it hydrolyzes some ionic and covalent compounds and you can see here the kind of uh, reactions being exhibited by water with different compounds. Coming to the formation of hydrates, many salts can be crystallized from their aqueous solutions as hydrated salts. There are three examples shown here, wherein you can see that in the first case it forms a part of coordination sphere and in the second case there is a water association with the barium oxide and in the third case it is a hydrated uh, copper sulphate you can see having 5 water molecules associated with copper sulphate. After understanding the chemical properties of water, let us now know what is hard water and what is soft water. Rain water is almost pure because it contains some dissolved gases only. When it flows on the surface of earth, it dissolves many salts such as hydrogen carbonate, chloride and sulphates of calcium and magnesium ions. This makes water hard. What is hard water? It is that water which has these dissolved salts and which does not give lather with soap. But water which does not contain above salts and lathers with soap is called soft water. So, that is the distinction. Hard water rather forms 
scum or precipitate with soap. You must be curious to know why it so happens. What is scum? Soap contains sodium stearate that is C17 H35 COONA. So, this is a carboxylate salt, sodium salt exactly of stearic acid which reacts with calcium or magnesium ions present in the soap to give either calcium stearate or magnesium stearate which are obtained as precipitate or scum and the corresponding reaction is shown here. You can see that the magnesium and calcium ions have replaced sodium ions in the sodium stearate and the scum formed has been shown on the right side as a precipitate. Thus, hard water is unfit for use in the laundry and in boilers because it forms scales which reduces their efficiency. So, now the question is how to remove this hardness of water and make the water fit for use. For that first you have to know about what type of hardness is there only then after that you can think of removing it. Hardness of water can be of two types temporary or permanent. Let us first understand the temporary hardness and the methods of its removal. The temporary hardness of water is due to the presence of hydrogen carbonates of magnesium and calcium and it can be removed by two methods first is boiling and second is using Clark's method. On boiling magnesium hydrogen carbonate changes to insoluble magnesium hydroxide and calcium hydrogen carbonate changes to calcium carbonate. Both these magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate are obtained as precipitates which can be filtered to give soft water. In Clark's method lime is added to hard water. What is lime? Lime is calcium hydroxide which reacts with hydrogen carbonates to give the precipitates as shown in the reactions below. Again here the precipitate of calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide formed can be filtered to give the soft water. Let us now understand what is permanent hardness and how it can be removed. Permanent hardness results due to the presence of chlorides and sulphates of magnesium and calcium ions in the water. It cannot be removed by boiling as was there for the case of temporary hardness. There are various methods for the removal of permanent hardness. These are treatment with washing soda that is sodium carbonate, second is Kalgan method, third is ion exchange method and fourth is synthetic resin method. We will now explain each of these methods in detail. The first method using the treatment of hard water, permanent hard water is with sodium carbonate which is known as washing soda also. It converts the soluble chlorides and sulphates of magnesium and calcium to their insoluble carbonates as is shown in the reactions here. These carbonates can be filtered off to get the soft water. The next method is Kalgan method and in this method Kalgan is used. What is Kalgan? It is the commercial name of sodium hexametaphosphate which has the chemical formula Na6P6O18. Its complex anion reacts with magnesium ions and calcium ions of hard water and keeps them in the solution as is shown in the equation below. You can see that now sodium has been replaced by calcium ions and magnesium ions and a new anion has been formed with uh, magnesium and calcium as cations and this remains in the solution only and does not precipitate out. Let us now study the ion exchange method for the removal of permanent hardness. This method is also known as zeolite or permuted process. Zeolite or permuted is sodium aluminum silicate that is 
N A A L S I O 4 which can be represented as N A Z. Mind you here we are denoting A L S I O 4 as Z. In hard water the following exchange reaction occurs between the zeolite and the M 2 plus ions which are magnesium ions or calcium ions and we are getting here according to this reaction the exchange of sodium ions with the cations present in the hard water. When all the sodium ions of the zeolite have been used up it gets exhausted that means its capacity to work has finished. So, what can we do now? Can we regenerate it? Yes, how? This is done simply by adding aqueous sodium chloride solution. We can replace the M 2 plus ions by sodium ions as in M Z 2 as is shown in the reaction given below and we can regenerate the starting material here that is the zeolite. We can also use another method for removing permanent hardness of water which is more efficient than zeolite method we just discussed. It involves the use of synthetic ion exchangers and is known as synthetic resin method. Cation exchange resins contain large organic molecules with minus SO3 group and are water insoluble. On treatment with sodium chloride, it changes to R minus Na plus where R minus is the anion of the resin. In hard water, Na plus of exchange resin is exchanged with the cations calcium 2 plus and magnesium 2 plus and you can see that here sodium has been replaced by the M 2 plus cations. Again the exhausted resin can be regenerated by adding aqueous sodium chloride solution. Thus by taking cation exchange resin in the RH form, we can exchange all the cations of the type Na plus, Mg2 plus, calcium 2 plus etcetera which leads to the release of H plus ions in the water making it acidic. Similarly, we can carry out the exchange of anions by using anion exchange resin in the minus OH form. According to this reaction, here by using this resin minus OH ions get replaced by anions present in the hard water. Which anions? These anions are chloride ions, sulphate ions or hydrogen carbonate ions etcetera and according to this equation these are getting exchanged with the minus OH ions present in the resin and we are getting in the product minus OH ions. Here water is formed according to the reaction shown where H plus ions are coming from the cation exchange resin and OH minus ions are coming from the anion exchange resin. The cation and anion exchange resins can be regenerated by adding dilute acid and dilute alkali solutions respectively. Thus, by this process we are able to get demineralized or deionized water. I hope you found these methods of softening water very interesting. Let us now sum up what we have learnt in this episode. Water has unique properties and plays a key role in the biosphere. It is crucial for survival of all life forms. Water is amphotric in nature and can undergo redox and hydrolysis reactions. It is also present in the form of hydrated crystalline salts. The temporary hardness of water is caused by the presence of hydrogen carbonates of calcium and magnesium ions while the chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium ions cause permanent hardness of water. The temporary hardness can be removed by boiling or by Clark's method. The permanent hardness can be removed by treatment with sodium carbonate that is washing soda by Kalgan method, by ion exchange method and by synthetic resin method.
Now, there are certain questions for you to answer. These are number 1, what are different shapes of ice crystals? Very fascinating, just explore them. Second question is, what is the effect of polar nature of water on its physical properties? Third is, why organic and inorganic compounds dissolve in water? Explore more about purification of water by resins, which resins are used these days commercially. How is water purified by RO? Because many homes now use RO as a method of purification for drinking water. And the last question is demineralized water good for drinking purposes. We hope that this episode has enriched your understanding about water and various aspects related to it. In the next episode, you will study about important compounds of dihydrogen. These are hydrogen peroxide, H2O2 and heavy water. We will also discuss there the uses of dihydrogen as a fuel, which is the demand of the day. I thank you for watching this episode.